Welcome back. I'm Rob Lang and this is my game Clomper. You live inside a mechanical ladybird called a Clomper, which you control by making pipes to power machines with steam. The outside world is a hellscape, which you explore from inside the Clomper, gathering resources and completing quests. That sounds like fun. Go wishlist on Steam. Welcome back. In this one, we're going to look at changes to photo mode camera, lighting. I've put irises on things <laughs> because, of course, I've had I've tried to record this four times without mentioning irises. It's not worked yet. I've also put some other steam port blanks in. What are they? I'll show you. They're faked. It's brilliant. I've started changing the boiler handles, but I'm not very keen on those. I've got a weird problem with Unity that maybe you could help with. I'll get onto wishlist progress. I've started doing TikToks and the people on Discord have requested something and of course I am their servant. So let's get into it. So the photo mode camera is a really handy device to let you bounce around inside your scene. I'm going to leave it in the game but I originally created it for making devlogs easier. The camera had one particular problem and that's that if I wanted to go outside it would place the camera right in the middle of the clomper which isn't a very good scene and I'd find that the first thing I'd do is I'd have to move it around. Well I changed that so now when the photo mode camera pops to the outside it's automatically looking at the clomper. I also added a place inside the clomper to make it easier for comparing different lighting environments. Here's the lighting at the end of the last devlog. It all looks pretty good, it's quite bright and everything looks shiny. However it's very contrasty and what do I mean by that? Well, in some areas inside here, you've got areas that are really very, very bright. And I love how shiny that pipe is. And then you've got areas that are very, very dark, like this pipe over here. Now, the pipe is lit correctly. You have one bright light there and you have the other bright lights around the room. And they're all contributing to it. So you'll see it's very bright around the back here, but it's not bright here. It's barely lit at all. It's very, very dark. And that's quite weird because this is an enclosed space. So there would be, if it were real, lots of light bouncing around inside off all the different services. So it would be very strange to have an area which is this dark in a room this small with this much light. Now the technology to calculate how light bounces around in real time is called ray tracing. And I'm using the universal render pipeline that doesn't do that. So I have to fake it. So the first thing I did is make two directional lights that don't cast shadows. I first of all created one that lights upwards and that would then light the bottoms of the pipes. If I switch that on and off, you can see how it adds an extra kind of blue glint to it. And the similar one to light downwards. Now both of these lights aren't pointing straight down, they're pointing at something of an angle. And that's just enough to give a little bit of light on the sides of flat objects that are going straight up and down. But that wasn't the only thing I did. This is the shader that most of the things inside the clomper use. And you can see here, plugged into metallic, I've got this multiply, which takes the very shininess of metallicness of the pipes and just reduces it by a tiny amount. That says 0.93 in there. Now, let's see if I take it up to one. You can see on this steam port, it gets darker. And if I take it all the way down to something like 0.1, you can see now, the contrast is reduced. So I can reduce the contrast by making the material look a bit more plastic. Now this is a balancing act and I'm not sure I've got it quite right, but I'm leaving it at 0.93 for now. It's about right. The last thing I did to help reduce that contrastiness is playing with post-processing. I added color adjustments here on the end and you can play with the post exposure, bring it up and down the contrast by making it more or less contrasty and also playing with the saturation to make the colours pop a bit more. Mm, but not too much. No doubt I'll come back to lighting and try and improve it in the future when I do a performance pass, but for right now, I'm happy with that. Let's move on. So here we have the humble map. It's not changed a great deal since I first started Clumper four and a half years ago, but I do love it very much. But it's not been quite complete. I pointed out in the last video that when it switches off, all the hexes go flat and sink into the green table. And I didn't really like that very much. 
In fact, I've always wanted to put an iris in here. So now, when it switches off, it looks like this. <laughs> and similarly, opening up. Oh. Would you like to know how I make the irises? If you're interested, just leave a comment down in the bottom. If you think I'm bonkers, then phone someone. Please phone, phone someone. The other machine that needed some love is the periscope. Now the periscope has just sort of sat there. When it was off, it would stay there. And when it was on, you'd step underneath it and it would work. Now the periscope is absolutely vital to the game because it's the only way you can see outside. So it needs a proper animation for switching on and off. Now my first attempt looked a lot like this. And while that was okay, the casual Dutchman, yes, He's the casual Dutchman again, and Alejo Lab pointed out that when it was down in the floor, it didn't really look like a machine, it didn't look like anything. And they were right. In fact, back at the original drawings, I didn't have it going straight down in the floor, it had this kind of circular cow. So here it is, switched on, I can walk underneath it, and then look around, out into the world. I think I've messed up the fog. That's a bug for later. <laughs> But then when it's off or damaged, it needs to be put away. And of course, for those who are paying attention, there's an iris. Because of course there is. It's going down. And coming back up. Oh, so satisfying. Just done with animators, nothing clever or fancy in there. Could do it again. I like how it eats it. And going there, you go. Fantastic. A little bit more messing to do with that, but it's pretty much done. Love it. Another problem I had was that if you look down inside the pipes, they looked a bit empty. And while that's not too bad for a pipe like this, if it's a machine like this one, that would look really weird. So I added these clever little irises in here but they're not real, they're fake. I faked them. And it doesn't matter that they're fake because whenever there is actually steam coming out the end, you can't see them. It's just magic. It's still there, you can just about see it on the inside if I go to delete. There we go, still there. It's just the VFX doesn't care that it's there and it just blows straight through it. There we go. Small thing, but I really like doing that. And it's an iris. So of course I had to. So the next bit of temporary graphic that I need to get rid of is this boiler handle, which is this sticky thing here, sticking out the side of this dial. It's a bit awkward, don't really like it. The idea was that the position of the handle would tell you how much steam pressure you've got coming out of it. Now you can also see that on the dial here as it's bouncing around disturbingly. The little short handle will show you how much is being created and the long one showing you how much is being used. Now this boiler isn't attached to anything, it's just pushing its steam out. So the reason for the handle being like that is that if you then walk up right up the other end, you'd be able to see the angle of the handles and work out how much you've got on. And you can largely do that from up here. Say you're playing over here with the, <laughs> with the iris. Oh, so good. And you look round, you go, ah, oh, yeah, the handle's all right. But as you can see, it's not actually that useful, really because you can't see it flashing. <laughs> you just got the steam in the way and quite often you'll have steam coming out as you're building stuff. So I don't think it's that useful. <laughs> oh, oh God. It's gonna happen once a video, isn't it? It's gonna... Oh God. All right, lads. Yeah, you're all right. Oh. Yeah, so you can change, you can't change it now. Let's just pretend that I've not blown one up. <laughs> so you can change the angle and then be able to see the angle. But I, yeah, I don't like this handle. All right, mate, you're all right. Having a good day. Yeah, good. I want to pet these dudes. I'm going to put petting in. Little fire sprites, lovely. So let's turn that one down or that one explode. So you'll be able to see it and get a gauge of how how much power the boiler is out and whether you should be doing something about it, like not letting it explode. <laughs> oh, this is very professional, very serious, or very serious professional. Hello! All right! 
You're on a pipe. Look at you, little cutie. Oh, boop. This is a big jump. Careful, you're out on the edge. That like you're hovering weirdly. Oh, he's gone. You're right. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, let's look at the new ones. Ta-da! Here are the new ones. I think they're quite squanky. Squanky? I think they look quite swanky, don't you? You can move them up and down. They work in the same way, but they're just nicer. They're a bit chunkier. Now, you might think, oh, Rob, they're a bit, I've done it again. Look, I've set the boiler to maximum pressure. Let's not do that. <laughs> Let's just get halfway through a monologue and it'll explode. So I tried to make them smaller, more dainty looking. But the problem is they look really weird next to these valves. So they needed to be chunkier. I tried to make them the same kind of chunky as those, but it looked really, really odd. So they're a little bit smaller in diameter, but they're in keeping with the standard valves and the ones on the switch too. Very pleased with those, but, but, but I'm still not happy with them because they sort of jerkily move, which isn't unreasonable, but I feel like I could do a bit of tweening. Now I've not used do tween before or dot tween or however you'd like to pronounce it. I've not used it, but I want to. So I'm going to for the next video. Didn't quite make it in time for this one, but I'll be playing with that next. If I may ask for a little bit of help from you, the Unity Coding Creative Community. That was a strange ad lib. <laughs> we'll go with it. I have a problem with wireframe. Now here in the scene view, if I choose wireframe, only a few of the models show up. And I honestly have no idea why that is. If I select, say, the grabber station, you can see it. But as soon as I select the grinder, which is behind it, it disappears. But do you know why it does this? I've asked on the Unity forums, and they don't know. So I don't know. <laughs> if you've got any idea what I have done to make most of the models disappear, either jump over to the Unity post or post down in the comments, please. It's driving me bonkers. <laughs> like anyone would know. At time of recording, I'm now up to four. Well, stop, 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 stop. Now, a few weeks have gone by since I recorded all of this nonsense. I got ill with migraines that happens every so often, and then I had a micro holiday, and I've just been catching up ever since. Since then, I've crossed the 500 wish list barrier, which is fantastic, and I'm absolutely delighted, which is why I'm sitting out here in the cold in my backyard, just adding a little extra bit into the video. Right, back on to the rest of the cringe. So if you've been considering about wishlisting it, then please do pop over to Steam and give Klomper a good old wishlisting, and I'd be very, very grateful. Thank you very much. Another thing I've been experimenting with recently, and I warn you, this is not the most cringe thing in this video, is TikTok. Yes, I have a TikTok, just one. I'm probably gonna make some more of me failing to record devlogs, but I've just got the one TikTok at the moment. It's the intro in vertical. It's all a bit weird, but thoroughly enjoyed making it. It's just a bit different. So if you're on TikTok, you can find me on TikTok as The Clomper, because it's the Clomper, isn't it? And that leaves me to say thank you so much for all your continued support and being on this rather lengthy journey. 68, 68 devlogs now. For the binge watchers, I'm so dearly sorry. I hope you're okay. Please seek help. And for the rest of you, I'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye. So on Discord, my community members voted for me to have a dab on this particular channel, as if, as if it's not cringe. Well, hang on a minute. How do you dab? I don't know. How how is it? How to dab, um, ultimate guide to doing the perfect dab, and then... You have to search up how to dab. <laughs> yeah, no, don't know. Yeah, you move a couple of your arms, but it's not that hard. It is you not You don't need a PhD easy. to do a dab. I have a PhD. Yeah, not in dabbing. That is obvious, otherwise I wouldn't have just Googled it. Yeah, right. but you don't need one. <laughs> okay. Are you going to show me how to dab, or would that be... No. <laughs> You're, you are no use to me. Okay, so here we go. Okay, this is for Discord. How was that? 
be honest. That, that was horrible. <laughs> that, you, that. Oh, that. Do you feel like your world's just shrunk? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Discord. Appreciate it.